E2 Dice. E2. Jake from Monsters and Munchkins here, and today we're going to be talking about dice. As someone who owns lots of dice for very, very, very necessary reasons, and I've never accidentally left my dice at home as an excuse to buy more dice, never, I feel somewhat qualified to talk about dice. And not the fun virtues of dice hoarding or that lovely click clack sound that they make, or even the refreshing feeling of stepping on a D4 in the morning. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do when your dice betray you. We've all been there. Your big model just needs to make a bunch of saves, and then he just decides to fail all of them when he should have made 75% of them. Or your character is lying on the floor bleeding out, and, you know, they roll a one for their death saves, and then, well, it's time to roll up a new character because Johnny's dead. Nobody likes rolling bad. It does not feel good to have your plan go to hell because your dice decided that today was one day. But it does happen, and it happens frequently, and it happens to everybody, except for a few people that I know. But it happens to most people, and what do we do when it happens? We're going to be talking about your dice betraying you in war games, and how to maybe work around that a bit, and your dice betraying you in role-playing games, and how to make sure that the story is still rewarding when it does happen. Let's start with your dice betraying you in war games. Now, it doesn't feel good to go to a tournament, or to play just a regular game, and to lose because your dice rolled badly. And something I've noticed, having gone to quite a few tournaments in the past year, is the fact that a lot of people tend to blame their dice when things go wrong for them. Especially when I started playing the game when I was much younger, people would all the time just say, well, you won because my dice rolled poorly. Or you won because your dice spiked. I hate that. Like, I hate that so, so, so much. Dice won't lose you the game. They might help your opponent win, but they won't lose you the game. And you shouldn't put yourself in a position that your dice will decide what happens. When you're playing a war game, we need to all be prepared for the moment that our dice go to hell or our opponent's dice just, you know, they make all their saves because it, it happens. I remember way back in the beginning of 8th edition, I was playing my friend Sam and I had my two best friends, the Primarchs, with me for the first time, first time I brought them to a tournament. And Magnus, Magnus, my Magnus the Blue, was all buffed up. He had his three plus invulnerable save. He was minus one to hit. He was just taking shot after shot after shot. And he was just making all of his saves against his Eldar. And Sam was just super calm, just kept playing the game. And then eventually Magnus decided to start failing his saves. And I won that game, but it had nothing to do with that particular instance, believe it or not. And after the game, I asked him, you know, Sam, other people I've noticed if I was going to make all my saves on Magnus because three plus invulnerable saves spike, they would have gotten quite upset. Why? How? What's up? Why were you so calm? And he just said to me, dice spike and you need to be patient and wait that out and not let that mess with your game plan. That is something that really stuck with me. I remember when I was feeling burnt out a bit on 40k, I would blame dice all the time and it is a really bad habit to get into. If you're just going to say, well, my dice suck, so I'm losing or my luck sucks so I'm losing, then yeah, you're gonna lose, but not because your dice are bad, because you're not fixing your problems. You're not fixing positions you put yourself in where you need to make your saves. If your plan is I'm gonna shoot these Norse brains at that Baneblade and he's gonna fail all of his three up saves and it's gonna die. Statistically, yes, your Norse brains double tapping with excruciating frequencies will kill the Baneblade, but what if he makes a lot of three up saves? What, what happens when the dice don't go your way? You need a backup plan. You need something else that you can do in that situation where your opponent making their saves or you failing to wound it is not going to totally skew your game plan. And while some people say that their luck is really bad, statistically, these things come around, which is why hordes in every game I play, like even in Kill Team, just bringing a bunch of guardsmen against some custodies, you will probably win because weight of dice will eventually happen and your dice will average out over the course of the game. Even if in one turn you're rolling really hot, another turn you're rolling really bad, it averages out over the game. And let's say you're playing a war game and you just have the worst luck. Like you're telling me, Jake, every time I roll, I roll a one into a one all the game. That's all I do. I can't roll well. Pick an army that is consistent and doesn't need you to roll well. That those, those are options that exist. Custodes is an example of that. They hit on twos, they re-roll ones. It is incredibly consistent. Emperor's Children is another example of that. You charge out of Deep Strike and you can just make your charge as long as you roll the three up on two dice with four tries to pull that off and then the other one just 
you know, becomes a six because that's a thing they can do. Pick consistent armies. Even Gene Sealer cults have ways to be consistent, although if your luck is that bad, maybe don't bring a whole bunch of neophytes. Just pick things that are consistent. Don't bring Astra Militarum or Orcs and you're just going to hope that your dice work out for you if you are actually out there telling me that your luck is just that bad. There's always a way to win a game. There's always a way to work around dice. And this is something that we need to be conscious of. While our luck might not always work in our favor and we will lose games, nobody's perfect, nobody's going to win all their games, we can work around our bad luck. What about in RPGs where we're not playing to win and we're playing to tell a story with our friends? Well, yeah, that's just really going to suck if you're just rolling really poorly. Again, there are classes you can pick where you don't make attack rolls, you make your DM make saving throws, you roll just to buff your friends and you don't need high rolls for that, you don't need any rolls for that necessarily, you can play support, or you can just stand at the front of the party and tank, even if you're, you know, not hitting anything back. However, I tend to be more of a glass half full type person and prefer to think of bad roles in role playing games as opportunities to develop a story, even if it's not the story that we necessarily set out to tell at the start of the session. When we roll, pl when we roll poorly, it is a representation of something that our character did. Or if you're playing like Warhammer Crusade, it is a representation of something that our army did. And it is an opportunity to tell a different type of story. Character death sucks, but it represents a moment for the party to deal with that. Their friend just died. And a new character is hopefully going to show up. Hopefully he didn't quit. A new character is going to come along. And while sad and it might take a moment, these are times for growth. I know Critical Role is the, you know, poster child for generic Dungeons and Dragons, but there's a reason for that. And I think a big part of it is the sportsmanship we see on that show with their dice. Sam Regal, who for a long time in Campaign 2, to the best of my recollection, had terrible dice luck. Like, he rolled really bad all the time, and yet he continued to tell Not's story, Veth's story, spoilers, in a brilliant way. Jester, Laura Bailey, who statistically has rolled the most natural ones on that campaign in the least natural 20s, despite being the dice goddess, has continued to play a very upbeat jester and has used moments of rolling really bad to continue to tell their stories. Just because you roll bad in an RPG doesn't mean that's the end of the line. It means it's a new opportunity. This video has been shorter today, and I think that's just because it's been easy to get to the point. Nobody likes it when we roll bad. It happens to everybody. But have a backup plan for it, and have a way to work around it. And don't ruin everybody else's fun for it. You've been my wonderful audience, and I've been Jake from Monsters and Munchkins. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the little bell button so you know what's going on. And follow the applicable links in the description down below. Until we meet again, don't forget to have fun, and roll some dice.